the majority of us shall agree that we often postpone our big purchases by weeks or even months. Be it the new iPhone or a pair of Armanis, we tend to step back from making the purchase and justify our decision by saying that the current one in possession is good enough. According to research, the reason we rationalize ditching the purchase is to avoid the negative emotions we face as we part ways from a large amount of money. These negative emotions are collectively called the pain of payment. Coined by Ofer Zellermeyer in 1996 of Carnegie Mellon University, the discovery of pain of payment proved that emotions drive our purchases and replace the older belief that buying things was totally a rational activity. In fact, the pain of payment acts as a strong deterrent against our impulsive buying tendencies and keeps them in check. But pain of payment wasn't the only thing researchers found. It wasn't a standalone set of emotions. It had its counterpart and their interplay affected buyer behavior in strange ways. This video will explore how the interplay between positive and negative emotions is being harnessed to turn us into compulsive consumers and shift us towards a cashless society. Like we mentioned, Zeller Mayer and successive researchers found that the pain of paying does not exist as a standalone factor. It exists along with another set of positive emotions called the pleasure of buying or the pleasure of purchase. People buy certain things not because they need them but also because they induce these happy feelings. Buying gives them a sense of gain while parting away from cash triggers that sense of loss at the same time. Researchers concluded that increasing the pleasure of purchase and reducing the pain of payment simultaneously was the right way to go. All this while, the factors that increase the pleasure of purchase and the tools that reduce the pain of payment remained scattered. It saved us from becoming compulsive shoppers. However, with the recent advent of smartphone-powered wallet apps, these two forces have morphed themselves into a psychological trap that is ultimately powered by cashless transactions and has the potential to pivot the society towards a cashless future for good or bad. Cashless consumerism starts with luring customers by showing them discounts that are hard to resist. The idea behind these discounts is to anchor our brains to the higher price and then offer a lower price to make it look irresistible. This is called anchoring bias, which has become a go-to marketing and merchandising strategy in the current day and age. Perpetual price anchors are the first thing that pulls you into this trap. If you want to know how anchoring bias works, watch this video. Link is in the i button and description. Zeller Mayer and successive researchers have pointed to bargains and discounts as one of the major boosters of pleasure of purchase and these price anchors are supposed to do just that. But displaying a price cut does not do much apart from generating interest. The trick is to make people sign up or buy some form of subscription so that they can experience the product and offer some form of commitment. This is where free subscriptions or free items do their job. Another component that adds to the pleasure of purchase. Be it the free trials for services like Netflix or the Costco rotisserie chicken. They are there for a reason. I mean, if you are someone who tried a free Netflix subscription using your credit card, did you cancel it afterwards? Probably not, because you are too invested in the programs and the characters to give that up now. Even the rotisserie chicken makes Costco bleed up to $40 million annually. But tasty food being one of the primal needs make their customers come back and renew their membership which are worth more than $4 billion annually. However, free subscriptions are limited and must be paid for ultimately, which can potentially recall the pain of payment. To mitigate that, easy accessibility to credit comes into the picture. Accessibility to credit is one of the key drivers of this trap. Credit is available everywhere and you can buy almost everything with it. 
unlike before, when credit cards used to be a tool for convenience, it is more of a prerequisite these days. Readily available credit cards has made purchasing expensive items easier, deteriorating our habits and sending us into this trap of perpetual consumption. No wonder the credit card debt in America has gone beyond 1 trillion US dollars. With credit, we do not feel the pain of payment instantly as we settle for installments, even if we have to pay more overall. But despite the surmounting debt, we are unlikely to be stopping anytime soon. In fact, we now have access to options like buy now pay later that lowers the pain of payment as they are interest free unlike credit cards. This is why BNPL has grown a lot in the last few years, not only as a payment option but also as standalone apps. Perhaps this is the reason compulsive shoppers love BNPL, most of which have maxed out their credit cards already. Buy now pay later companies may hard sell the idea of zero interest, but it is also a fact that these companies charge a lot on late payment. But despite all the hard facts, customers simply love them. They love BNPL, they love credit, they love the free trials and they tend to fall for the price anchors as well. The only problem is, these things have been scattered and being offered by different players until now. There was no single place where you could find them working in sync until recently. Smartphone based wallet apps once installed in your phone do something peculiar. They push you into habit loops by enabling you to pay your utility bills every month from the app itself. The convenience they provide gives them a permanent place in your smartphone which not only makes them the driver of this psychological trap but in many cases run it completely. This is why many of these wallet apps are trying to become full-scale e-commerce apps themselves. They are always popping with attractive deals, trying to bait you with price anchors and then facilitate a painless online transaction from the app itself. In fact, credit companies and BNPL are also making sure that they are available as a payment option across major wallet apps. The fact that payment apps can increase our pleasure of purchase while alleviating the pain of payment has changed our shopping habits. As smartphones increasingly become essential in our lives, so too will the prominence of wallet apps paving the way towards a completely cashless society. A majority of Americans under 50 believe that all transactions are likely to go cashless in the coming times. But because Democrats and Republicans do not want America to go totally cashless in the near future, a cashless America may not dawn so soon after all. But despite the resistance, there are voices in favor of a cashless society. They argue that a cashless society can bring the underbanked into the banking ecosystem while making payments easier at the same time. In fact, many countries in Southeast Asia have been trying to do something similar. However, this hypothesis has a serious logical flaw. For the underbank to be able to use cashless transactions, they would need a bank account. And a bank account is hard to come by without proper documents and paperwork. Since the underbank mostly consists of disenfranchised people, they are unlikely to possess the required documents to get started. And even if they could benefit from a cashless society, the fact that it is going to come at the cost of compulsive shopping habits is a disturbing one. Additionally, every dollar spent leaves a data trail that these wallet app companies can use to show ads within the app or other channels thus compromising our privacy and feeding our addiction at the same time. Not to forget, the possibility of a massive cyber attack is quite real that can put everyone at risk. However, being mindful of the fact that 50% of Americans use wallet apps to pay for goods and services, it won't be surprising to find ourselves in a cashless society a lot sooner than anticipated. Every part of the transaction from luring the customer to making a purchase may be conceived to maximize the pleasure of purchase. 
and minimize the pain of payment. And in an effort to quench the bottomless thirst driven by cashless consumerism, it may lead us to a world where we find ourselves drowning in the pleasure of consumption without any restraint or pain that demands discipline, that demands the strength of our character. Please like, share and subscribe if you loved the content.